Welcome back to Battlecast Primetime. I'm Raj Joshi. Once again, we join you from the illustrious CNC TV studios. Sure, it's nice to be back home, but I'm glad I was able to get out for a little bit of in-the-field reporting. No longer, Raj, can you whine about not being able to go anywhere. That was only the beginning, David. Coming off of a humiliating defeat last month, we're actually letting APOC out of his corner to cover the Red Alert 3 Community Summit. That's right, the little guy's licked his wounds, and it's now time to bring you all the news by the fans for the fans in APOC's Community Corner live from the Community Summit Red Alert 3 Tournament. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Aaron A. Pock Hoffman, your official CNC Community Manager, and I've got something a little special for you today. I am live here at the Red Alert 3 Community Summit. Red Knight! Red Knight! Thank you, my people. All right, let's get right into it. So, as you may know by now, the patch for Kane's Wrath PC is finally out. Yes, it's finally here, people, and it's going to address a lot of balance changes for all nine factions, also fix those pesky little desyncs and bugs. It's a great patch, and coming with the patch is also the onset of Ladder Season 2. You may remember our winner, Sean Teeter, from last season, taking home the $5,000 grand prize for the USA. Now we've opened up the Ladder Season to over 20 countries worldwide, and we've got an even bigger prize. $6,000 is on the table. So, cutting back to our console friends, this is Kane's Wrath 360, and it is finally out. We've gone gold. We're out there. The next evolution in console RTS is finally here. And speaking of Kane's Wrath for Xbox 360, we've also got a bunch of contests going on with some of our best fan sites. We've got Unscripted 360 and Gamertag Radio giving away a lot of swag, t-shirts, mugs, bumper stickers, games, and best of all, a copy of Kane's Wrath for Xbox 360. And shooting back over to the PC, you may have heard of the CNC3 mod SDK, which was released a little while ago. And we've got one of our uh, top prominent modders here, Brian Smurf Biscuit Ahonen, to tell us about a new mod coming up called Midi's Crisis 2. All right, so Brian, Midi's Crisis 2, it's coming out soon. Tell us a little bit about it. Midi's Crisis 2 is a total conversion for Command & Conquer 3. It has three new factions, Israel, Guardians of Islam, and the UN Peacekeepers. It has all new maps, all new units, and maybe a campaign. Sounds practically like a, like a true expansion pack to CNC 3. Yeah, it almost is, but you can think of it better as CNC Generals with Balls. You think the United Nations is going to approve of your theme? No, they're not going to like it at all. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about the gameplay? Well, this has very little in common with the first one, and since we switched to CNC3, we're going to have a completely new resource model where you have to capture occupation points. What's, uh, what's your favorite part about Midi's Crisis 2 so far? What do you like the best about it? My favorite thing so far has to be the IDF, because all the buildings are completely mobile and you can fly all around the map at ease. I'm very excited for Midi's Crisis 2 now. Tell me, when does it come out? Hopefully it'll come out end of June, early July. Well, thank you for coming to the corner. It's a pleasure having you, and I hope you've been enjoying the Red Alert 3 Community Summit. All right. Well, that's it, folks. Again, we're live here at the Red Alert 3 Community Summit. Red Knight! Red Knight! All right. Well, that's all I got for you today. Every day is commie day. Earlier this month, we brought 24 community leaders to our Los Angeles studios to witness the development of Red Alert 3 firsthand. The two-day event featured presentations from producers, artists, designers, and CNC TV's own Greg Black. The team unveiled all of the units, structures, and powers in the game, including those for the new Empire of the Rising Sun faction. After hands-on sessions with the latest builds, these RTS legends sat down with the dev team to give critical feedback before the beta test. We wrapped up the event by turning the tables and letting our illustrious guests school the dev team on life after launch with the Mod SDK. Going hands-on with Red Alert 3 is enough to make anyone jealous, but one lucky community member will be taking it even further. Tonight, these gamers will be showing off their voiceover skills for a shot to be immortalized in Red Alert 3. We've got a lot of highly talented voice actors in our community, but only one can become champion. This is Red Alert Idol! If they're good enough, then we're actually going to put their work in the game. So they're doing three uh, unit dies, they're also doing three bear growls, and they're doing uh, an actual line from one of the missions. <laughs> 
At last, we return into bosom of glorious Soviet revolution. Look, Tim, I know, this is the real you. So you just keep being you. That was awesome. Tim, that was horrible. I mean, seriously, Sean Connery gave a better Russian accent than you just did. I think you need to go back to being a website producer. <laughs> At last, we return to bosom of glorious Soviet revolution. Dog, dog, it was all right. The growl was all right. All right, you know what I'm saying? But, uh... But the French-Russian thing, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm feeling it so much. You know, it's just how I'm feeling. At last, we return to the bottom of Galarus' Soviet Revolution. You know, I think you really, really heated that up like Barry Manilow. So much that I think we're going to be pulling a lot more female gamers into Red Alert. Barry Manilow is more like Barry White. I think that bear was in heat. <laughs> At last, we return to bosom of glorious Soviet revolution. You know, that was, uh, that was pretty good. Your die did uh, confuse me. I thought it was a growl, but when I heard your growl, I gotta say, dog, that was a great growl. Great growl. Not even gonna touch the Russian accent. Well, those are our finalists. Before we open up the email lines, let's take a quick look at them all again. <laughs> <laughs> For Tim Goxon, email ra3idol01 at ea.com. For Jerome Uvard, email ra3idol02 at ea.com. For Ryan Anderson, email ra3idol03 at ea.com. And for Tim Morris, email ra3idol04 at ea.com. Remember, these are email addresses, not 877 numbers. See you next time on Red Alert Idol, Silverman out. The lines are now open, so email us your votes now. And stay tuned for an all-new episode of Hell's... <coughs> I'm sorry, I, I got a little carried away. For those of you who are not able to make it to Community Day, fear not! It's now your turn to meet the game makers. Find out what they do day in and day out as we meet a developer. I'm Jill Donald, and I'm the Senior Development Director on Command & Conquer Red Alert 3. I actually spent all of one semester in college as an architecture major. And as many people who've had similar experiences can attest, a lot of architecture majors stop that path after about a semester, which I did, and then was a psychology major. So I actually have my BS in psychology from Carnegie Mellon University. You know, most well, of the people anymore, that I think the general public sees or, you know, are people talking about creative things, ideas, what's going to go into the game. People like producers, textures, designers, like artists. Yes. The development directors here are the people who take all those ideas, work with the team, and actually figure out how to get the game made. So we spend our time developing plans with people, creating schedules, prioritizing work, basically making sure that the time the team spends is spent on things that are going to make the game better. You know, we take making Red Alert 3 very seriously. I mean, we know what the expectations are. We know what a beloved franchise it is. Um, but at the same time, we, like I said, we make video games. You want people to enjoy what they're doing, to have fun with it. So we definitely try to keep that atmosphere and environment on the team. We are never above in a team meeting putting up a funny picture of someone who's done something embarrassing. Um, that's always a, a highlight of any team meeting. I do have to be very careful, though, because the moment you say anything that could even slightly be a double entendre, there's just snickers from the entire team. We have a regular supply Whoa. of Nerf darts that there are dart battles that go on. Oh. People have scooters they use to get around the floor. I always feel like I fit in. I don't think the guys treat me any differently. I may be a girl, but I like the same stuff they do. But I just like a lot of the people on the team. <laughs> I have a lot of Greg Black stories, most of which are not appropriate for television. Um, Greg is certainly a character. Greg has recently learned a little bit to play the harmonica and uses the harmonica to express the people at work who annoy him. So you'll get a little bit of like, ba -na -na -na, I hate you guys, ba -na 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 -na, I hate you all. Especially Dave Silverman, I hate him the most. I think when it comes to like the written word, Greg Kasavin is just the man. He can write anything and make it sound great. Whether it's unit responses or like when he's writing review feedback for people. The spy is so hysterical, I think people are gonna want to use and build that unit just to hear what he says. There is this perception that like, oh, it must be really hard to get into video games. If you want to work on games, just find a way to get in there. Lots of the people who come in for design have spent time with our world builder. You can download the world builder online. You know, they come in, they've already made maps. That's always impressive. You know, there's 
tons of engineering positions. Being a network engineer would help. We're always looking for network engineers, not just our team, but the whole industry in general. And I think we try to make sure everybody here is doing what they're best at and contributing what they can. Maybe we should do a Meet a Developer segment about me next time. Right, David? Uh, you'd actually have to develop something, Raj. Plus, I don't think we'd have enough footage to make a full segment. When we return, last month you saw APOC get demolished in a demoralizing match against Commander T. Well, at least he won one match, unlike uh, some other people. An all new grudge match awaits you, and I promise this time the opponents will be a little bit more evenly matched. You don't want to miss this when Battlecast Primetime continues on Command and Conquer TV. Brother, it is time you saw the face of the future. Peace through power. 